So SDXL has recently released a new update for their stable diffusion models called the Realism Engine SDXL. I came across a post about it on Reddit and it caught my attention because the checkpoint models for realism showed promising results in photos. In this video, I will be testing out these models with both photos and animations. And now let's explore how these checkpoint models perform across various scenarios. You can find the Realism Engine SDXL checkpoint models available at Civitaya.com, where they showcase some truly impressive results. But before we dive into that, let's have a quick introduction to their latest version, 2.0, and they also provide preferred settings for Automatic 1111. In my testing, I will be using both the Comfy UI and the Automatic 1111 settings to see how the checkpoint models perform. Additionally, they claim to utilize the sampler method DPM plus 2s, and for higher sampling, they recommend DPM plus SDE Karas. I will be testing out both of these sampling methods as well. They also recommend an upscaler for optimal results, which I will be evaluating. For this checkpoint model testing, I will begin with the Comfy UI and have already downloaded the checkpoint models. It's worth mentioning that these checkpoint models include VAE, so there is no need for an individual VAE loader. This is a basic default workflow in the Comfy UI for text to image generation. I'm loading up the checkpoint models provided by SDXL to test their quality. I'm following their recommended sampling method and using the provided CFG numbers for sampling. Uh, let's run it with a sample text prompt from their showcase and verify that everything is functioning properly. For this test, the text prompt is futuristic robotic human, which I get it from their showcase. Let's cue the prompt and observe the results. I also have another image of a close-up photo of a realistic woman, and it looks quite promising. I'm using the default SDXL settings of 1024 width and height for this image. Here is the text prompt I'm using for this particular test. Additionally, let's try another text prompt using their showcase example. I'm adjusting the CFG to a higher value of 7 and the sampling step to 30. Let's see how it turns out. This one looks nice. The lighting above her hair, it's like capture a natural motion of a model picture. Now, let's move on to another example, a city view or street view. Here's an image of it and we'll try to replicate a similar result using the provided text prompt and settings. Let's see if we can achieve a comparable outcome with this particular example. Uh, I'm adjusting the width to create a wider landscape dimension for this particular image. Okay, that's looking pretty good. It's quite similar to their showcase example, and the level of detail in the street view is impressive. However, Upon closer inspection, I noticed some deformities in the building's letters and the shop's banner. Perhaps we can use another detailer to fix that issue. Here's another street view using a different seed number, and it also shows promising results. I'm keeping the process simple for this test. Now, let's move on to testing uh, the Realism Engine SDXL with Animate Diff. In this test, I'm focusing on text-to-animations workflows, generating short animations with 48 frames using text prompts. After adjusting the dimension of the output, let's verify that everything is functioning as expected. We'll change the text prompt to a samurai image text prompt from their showcase, hoping to create some captivating animations. Next, we need to select the appropriate checkpoint models and load the VAE along with them. It's important to establish a connection with the VAE in this process. Let's organize everything and ensure that the sampling step remains consistent for both the normal result and the upscaler result. Once everything is set, we click Run and observe the processing. I'll fast forward this part. 
and here we have the result. Wow, it looks pretty cool. The animation generated by the Realism Engine SDXL is quite impressive and visually appealing. The samurai clothing remained undistorted, which is a positive outcome. Let's now wait for the latent upscaler sampling to finish loading. Here we have the first sampler result, and alongside it we have the latent upscale animation result. Comparing the two, I believe the original one is better than the upscaled version. Especially considering the upscale factor of 1.5. The upscaled version shows some disfigurement in the body. Such as an enlarged stomach, which doesn't look quite natural. However, the original version, with the dimensions of 1024x1024, is quite appealing. In conclusion, these checkpoint models can indeed be used effectively with animate diff for creating realism style animations. Let's proceed and test the automatic 1111 setting. This time I will generate realism photos using a text prompt from their showcase. Additionally, I will attempt to enhance screenshots from the upcoming GTA 6 game trailer, transforming the character faces and details to resemble real people. I have captured all the image frames from the GTA 6 trailer, which is a highly popular game. The objective is to enhance the character faces and overall details to make them appear more realistic. Okay, this first result shows a guilty face of a woman. While it doesn't exactly match the original character, let's try lowering the denoising strength to see if we can achieve a closer resemblance. Even with the adjustment, it still falls short, particularly in the eyes. We may need to use an additional detailer to address the eye area and other facial deformities. However, when not zoomed in, the overall outcome is quite impressive for realism models. After applying the add detailer, the result improves significantly. It now looks quite nice, capturing the facial emotions and conveying a sense of guilt in the woman's expression. Moving on to the next example from the GTA 6 screenshot, we can observe the remarkable improvements in the eyes, facial features, and skin. The use of these realism checkpoint models yields impressive results. Let's experiment further by increasing the denoising strength to 0.45 and raising the sampling step to 50. Let's see how this adjustment affects the outcome. Now let's apply the add detailer. Well, the result looks different from the original GTA 6 storyline. In fact, the face now appears to have a face mask resembling COVID-19, whereas the original story depicted a bandana wearing robber entering a store for looting. But, uh, well, it looks pretty cool. Yeah, you can see the hair and the skin starting to transform uh, from 3D characters to a more realistic style image. Let's try it again and see if we can get another result here. So, this is another screenshot from their GTA 6 trailer. Okay, and then the add detailer is running on it. Okay, wow. Actually, after the add detailer, the resulting image changed, and the face of the character looks younger. But I really like how the shoulder skins of the female characters are improving compared to the original image. And also the side view of the face. Let's try it again with another result.
okay, this time it's getting better. At least the guy has a mustache now. And yeah, the female characters look good. They look good. But the eyes have the wrong focus. They should be looking at the male character, but the shoulder skins and the face skin are starting to transform, making them look more like real people. It looks pretty good. Let's see this one. So it changed in this result. It doesn't have the face mask, but there's blood on the cheek. The female character has blood on her face. It transformed a little bit and looks cool. So let's try the upscaler with their preferred upscaler models, which is the Esergen 4X. This is what they prefer on their Civitai.com page. Let's upscale it two times and see. It looks quite nice. I mean, there's still some slight blurring on the skin and clothing, but overall, it's a good result. Actually, let me try my method here. I prefer using the 4X Ultra Sharp Upscaler to enhance the sharpness, and I also like to add some additional detail with another upscaler. For the second upscale, let's try using the 4X Ultra Sharp Upscaler in combination with the 8X NMKD Super Upscale. Let's upscale the image two times using this method. And here is the result. I personally prefer sharpening the colors of the image. And as you can see, I like to enhance the details in the clothing by applying a slight sharpening effect. Additionally, I add more detail by utilizing another second upscaler. It's important to note that this is solely based on my personal preference. You can experiment with different upscaling models to find what suits your needs best. Let's also try another second upscaler. This time we'll use the 4X Ezergan as the second upscaler. Yeah, this version looks quite nice. It appears to be slightly sharper than the original upscaler preferred by Civitai.com. The colors are enhanced and the skin has a more solid appearance. Remember, these choices are subjective and depend on personal preference. Feel free to explore different upscaling models to achieve the desired results based on your own preference. Okay. Let's try using the latent upscale in Comfy UI using image to image. I'm going to change the text prompts here. The text prompt is used to enhance the details and the image quality. We are solely relying on the image to image features and the case sampler. I have loaded the previous images and this is the first result. It doesn't look like the original one. Now let's try the second one. Let's see. Personally, I feel that this checkpoint model works well with automatic 1111, but it doesn't look as good when using Comfy UI. It's just a matter of personal preference. Feel free to try something different if you think it can yield better results. As you can see from this result, the female character doesn't perform well with Comfy UI. In the previous example with automatic 1111, it performed better. Let's give it one more try. Okay, and finally, let's try this one. It's another screenshot from their GTA 6 trailer. I've seen other YouTube videos using this screenshot to transform it into a realism style. Let's see if this model works with this style or not. Okay, the character completely changes when I use a value of 0, 0, 0.55. So let's lower the denoise to 0035. So far, so good. These realism checkpoint models are good for characters, but they don't perform well for environments or landscape images. However, they work well for characters, especially when it comes to the skin. This is the result from the image to image transformation. Let's increase the sampling steps to 50 and see. All right, as you can see, the hand becomes clearer 
and you can see the dollar bill that the woman is holding more clearly. It has higher resolution, and it's easier to read the content on the paper and see the details of the character's face. The eyes and nose appear more like those of a real person rather than a 3D character. Once we add the detailer to enhance this image, it will become even better. I'm going to save this and try it later on. So yeah, this is the realistic, I mean the Realism Engine SDXL version 2.0. Guys, try this out and see if you guys have a good result in animations. Hope you guys like it and enjoy. I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye.